Well, hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. Today, I'm going to be sharing some techniques for bleaching and distressing denim. More specifically, raw denim. If you like to make your own jeans like I do, maybe you saw my last video where I made a great pair of jeans, then maybe you also would like them to have that sort of ready to wear, store-bought, distressed look. So in today's video, I'm attempting to achieve that look. Now, I will be completely transparent with you guys. Things did not go as planned at all in this video. I ended up very frustrated and very stressed over a pair of jeans that I kind of felt like I may have ruined. The end result is okay, but it's definitely not what I intended. Um, and I almost didn't even want to share this video to be totally honest, but I thought, you know, there's probably some things in here that might be helpful for other people. And I definitely learned a lot of lessons myself and I would try these techniques again using what I've learned to do it better next time. All in all, I'm glad that I did this. I'm glad that I experimented. I think that there's some really helpful tips in this video, but you'll see when we get into the video how I went wrong. Um, we can all cringe along together as we watch me destroy a pair of jeans. So with all of that out in the open, let's get into the tutorial. I started by creating several swatches of denim with a little flat felt seam down the center just to sort of mimic the type of seaming that I would have on my jeans. I picked up some Clorox and this is the splashless Clor Clorox because that was really all I could find. And I have a container here for some water and I've got all of my samples and I went ahead and wet all of the samples to make bleaching a little bit better. And I also have some gloves to protect my hands. I'm only doing about four cups of water here and maybe like half a cup of bleach to start. And I wanna make sure that I mix that in really well before I start bleaching the samples. And then I'll just submerge each of the samples into the water and bleach mixture and set my timer. I'm starting out with five minutes just to see what happens. And I wanna also make sure to agitate the samples periodically. Then I'll pull each sample out, squeeze out the excess water and bleach, and then take it over to the sink and rinse it out really well. I continued this process for each of the samples and actually increased my time. So I did 15 minutes for the next sample, which would be a total of 20 minutes. And I also added a little bit more bleach so that I ended up having about a cup of bleach for the four cups of water, which is a 25% concentration of bleach. Then I continued to make sure to agitate the samples. This sample was in for a total of 20 minutes. This one was in for a total of 30 minutes. And the last sample was in for a total of 40 minutes. So to recap, I had a five minute, 20 minute, 30 minute and 40 minute sample. Next, I wanted to do a little bit of bleach detailing. So I poured maybe like a teaspoon of bleach into this little ramekin and I also diluted it with water. So it's about a 50-50 bleach to water ratio. And I'm using Q-tips here dipped into the bleach and then I'm dabbing off most of the moisture. So the Q-tip is just damp, it's not soaked. And I'm going through and detailing along the edges and the seams, trying to get that sort of dappled texture that you see on the seams of jeans and just kind of playing around with the bleach, varying my pressure here and experimenting with a heavy hand and a light hand and just kind of going to town on these samples to see what technique works the best for getting that sort of naturally distressed denim look. Next, I have a spray bottle that is also 50-50 bleach to water ratio, and I'm shaking that really well, and I'm going to just experiment with spraying the bleach. And this spray bottle actually is really cool because it's kind of a mister. It does sort of a continuous spray once you spray it, which is really nice, and it kind of gives it a little bit more of an airbrushed feel. I just used that technique on one side of each of the samples so I could kind of compare it to the other side. And you can see that it does provide a really nice soft transition between the dark and the light areas where I use that spray bleach. And I really like that. Here you can see how I changed the pressure of the bleach detailing that I did. So some of the smaller spots I used a lot, a lot lighter texture and some of the larger spots I used a heavier texture. So here I got a little bit more heavy handed on the 40 minute sample and then here's the five minute sample and you can see that it barely took any of that bleach and it was a lot lighter. And then here's the sample that I didn't bleach compared to all the others. Next I wanted to try some samples in this RIT color remover. And on the back of the box it does say that it is not meant for blue denim and we will find out later why that is the case. Um, but I had seen kind of mixed reviews on people using this for denim, so I just wanted to try it out myself. And the recommended 
technique for this is to actually do it in a pot of hot water that's about 200 degrees. My water is definitely not 200 degrees, but I wanted to try it without putting it on the stove top because I thought if I'm doing this in the bathtub, I'm not gonna be able to get my water that hot anyway. So my water is probably around 100 degrees. So I've put the RIT color remover in my little sample batch here, and I'm just doing two samples to start. And you can see it starts to kind of turn the samples green. And I was expecting that because I had read a lot about that. So I let the first one sit for maybe, I don't know, five or 10 minutes, wrung it out, rinsed it out really well. And you can see that the sample re-oxidized once I rinsed it out and exposed it to air. Um, and all of that dye is also starting to bleed a lot more, which is kind of an interesting thing that's happening. But it also seemed to sort of re-dye the entire sample. So while it did lighten a little bit, it did kind of change the color and it also changed the sort of character of the denim. So this one you can see got really light, but then when I rinsed it, it got dark again. So that was another interesting test to see, but it is a slightly lighter, um, but not quite as light as I was expecting or hoping for. So this sample, I decided to just leave it in the water for like 30 minutes and see what happened. And you can see here, if we look at the back of the denim, you can't see the different colors of the warp and weft threads. It dyed everything blue once it was oxidized again when it was exposed to air. So this last sample, um, the water was cooling down quite a bit at this point, so it really didn't do anything. It still stayed really dark. And um, anyway, it was worth a shot. It was worth trying just to see how it would kind of turn out. So next I wanted to use some sandpaper and I'm just taking the raw denim samples that I have. These have not been bleached and I'm using sandpaper to sort of distress the denim and try to get a little bit of fading on the denim, which it really didn't do too much that I can see right off the bat. Then I folded the seam line in half just so I could get right along the edges there and kind of went to work on the denim seam line. There's a little bit of distressing there. And then I folded the sandpaper in half like so, just to kind of get a narrow edge that I can go right down the center of the seam because I don't really want to sand the actual stitching because it would compromise the strength of that seam. The next thing I wanted to try was actually cutting into the denim. So I just sliced several rows into the denim and I'm using tweezers to pull out the dark blue um, vertical threads to expose those horizontal white threads and kind of give it that kind of distressed look that you might get on the knee of your pants, for example. And I'm also using my scissors to kind of slice in and pull out threads that are smaller so it's not so square. And then I'm also sanding those areas. Then I used my seam ripper to kind of poke into the edges of the seam here. And then I'm gonna sand that down and kind of clip into it and cut it just to kind of rough up the edge of that seam. And I actually really like the way that this turned out. I think it looks pretty cool along that seam line there. And you can see, you can get a lot of really cool distressing with this technique. And here are all of my samples together. This is what they look like dry. They've all dried pretty light. I would say a couple of shades lighter than they were when I first took them out of the bleach or the RIT dye. So this is what everything looks like when it's dry. And here are those RIT samples when they are dry. As you can see, the color didn't lighten up very much at all. It was it's very subtle, especially this last one. Um, and on the back, you can see that those white threads that kind of make up that sort of diagonal weave pattern are no longer visible. So everything has been dyed the same color. Here are all those samples together. With all of my samples done, I was ready to start working on an actual pair of jeans. And I'm actually doing three pair of jeans here. So I'm washing them first just to get any sort of residue off of them. And I will be bleaching them while they're wet. And I'm adding about two to three inches of water to my tub and adding in the bleach, making sure that I mix that in really well so it's all really well incorporated into the water. And I'm starting with a pair of skinny jeans that I never wear. And I've had these for a while. They've just been on my mannequin. This is actually a different denim than I tested, but I kind of wanted to try out some of the techniques on denim that I didn't feel as precious about to start. And I'm making sure to flip the denim every few minutes, every five to 10 minutes, just to make sure that everything is well incorporated and even. And at one point I did add a little bit more bleach to the water because I just didn't feel like it was getting light enough fast enough. So I just took the jeans out, added the bleach in, and then laid the jeans back into the bleach and water mixture. Okay, so these jeans are taking a really long time to bleach out. This denim is a different denim than the denim that I tested yesterday on the swatches. I made two pairs of jeans out of this denim a long time ago, and one pair I actually really like, but they're just so dark that I never wear them. 
This pair has been on my mannequin for the last couple of years. I don't feel too precious about this pair. So I did Google it while I was sitting here kind of wondering why the heck they would not bleach out. And I've read that it can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours to bleach denim. So I'm not opposed to babysitting these for a couple of hours and just seeing what happens. My only concern is that um, the Clorox will kind of degrade the fabric a little bit, especially with the synthetic material that makes up the stretch in the jeans, that bleach can really degrade those fibers. So. Okay, new plan. Um, I'm going to actually take these jeans out. I'm just gonna hang them up here on the shower head, um, but not rinse them out yet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get the other jeans and start trying to bleach those just because I'm getting impatient. So I hung up the skinny jeans and I grabbed my better pair of jeans. This is the pair that I recently made. You may have seen the video of me making these and put these into the bleach. Okay, so um, I think that I'm ready to pull these jeans out. I have two samples from what I tested yesterday and I really liked this one, but I felt like it was just a little too light and this one was a little too dark. So I'm trying to get somewhere in the middle. And one thing to keep in mind, the Denim is gonna be a little bit darker wet than when it dries, so I'm erring on the side of caution. I'm going just a little darker than I think I need to. I'm gonna pull these out, um, I'm gonna wring them out, and then I'm just gonna throw them in the washing machine for a quick cycle um, to rinse out all of the bleach. You could also try to rinse these by hand. Um, I don't really have a great place to do that besides right here, and I actually wanna continue using the tub, so I'm just gonna throw them in the washing machine. Before throwing them in the washing machine, I just wanna wring out as much of the water and bleach as I can. So I'm doing that now, making sure that it's just not totally drippy, and then throwing it in the washing machine on a short cycle with a little bit of detergent. And I put the skinny jeans back into the bleach to continue processing. All right, moment of truth. Oh God. <laughs> oh no. These are very, very light. Oh crap. That's definitely much lighter than I was hoping for. Um, okay. Hux just walked in here. He's concerned. I got my jeans too light. Now what? But since they lightened up so much in the washing machine, I'm thinking that I just need to work that into my strategy. I'm gonna do that now, and then I'm gonna put my flares in. They're hanging up back here. Put those in the in the uh, bleach, and yeah, try not to get those quite as dark. I can't believe how much lighter those came out. My my guess is that they switched around in the water in the initial rinse cycle, and just continued to process in the bleach. So we want to avoid that. Here goes nothing. But hey, at least you're learning from my mistakes. <laughs> I might have to do another video on how to re-dye your jeans with indigo. Okay. <sighs> I'm a little discouraged with how light these are. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal, actually. I mean, the lighter styles are in style right now. So maybe I can make it work. So you can kind of see like right now, that is exactly the same color as this. And I know that this is gonna dry a couple of shades lighter because this, this was actually a good bit darker than this when it first came out. And it's probably gonna end up being closer to something like this. Um, it may be somewhere between these two, but yeah, I'm a little bit skeptical right now. Yeah, I think just the fact that this is kind of like super all one color, <laughs> it just looks a little odd and looks like kind of like vintage. Um, so anyway, I think once I start getting in here with some of the detailing and doing all of that, I, I think it will make a difference. So here is the kind of skinny jeans that I did first. And actually the color on these, I think is pretty darn close to what I want. And I had worn these jeans a little bit when I first made them. You know, they did get a little bit of wear, but it's interesting, like the bleach kind of picked up on those areas that had already gotten a little bit of wear. So that's really gonna help me, I think, when I start doing some of the distressing here. But it's good to know that <laughs> Throwing them in the washing machine lightens them up a couple of shades. I mean, these, when I pulled these out, I feel like they were at least 
two shades darker than this. So that's, that's good to know. One thing to note about these is that I did not wash these in detergent. I just put them in the, in the washing machine just with the bleach that was already on them and washed them. Um, so I don't know if that had any effect on it or not, but I think I'm gonna do the same thing for the other jeans. And here are the skinny jeans compared to those lighter jeans. You can kind of see the difference between the two colors and both of these are, are still wet. I decided to move forward with some of the bleach detailing on this lighter pair. This is the pair that turned out a little lighter than I wanted, but I thought, let's just go ahead and go for it. And I'm using the Q-tip with a little bit of bleach, diluted bleach, to sort of detail some of those raised areas, trying to mimic my ready to wear jeans. And I will say here, you want to use a very, 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 very light hand. This, the reason for this will become apparent soon because I'm kind of cringing right now as I'm watching this knowing that I ended up taking this way too far. And then I also use the bleach spray bottle to sort of add a little bit of extra distressing. And this is the jeans dry. They don't look as bad in this light, but I can tell you that the contrast between the light and dark areas is just, it's a lot. And I was very unhappy with how this turned out. I also had quite a bit of yellowing from the bleach where I did all of this detailing. So this definitely looked a little odd to me even though it's not totally apparent in these shots, just because the lighting is so kind of contrasty today. But yeah, the, the color just wasn't quite right on these and I was pretty disappointed in how they turned out. Okay, so it is day three of my jeans making adventure. And y'all, yesterday I was pretty discouraged after I just took it way too far on those jeans on my favorite pair. And I had to kind of put it aside and get some food, get some sleep. So this morning I got up, I took a look at the jeans and I thought, gosh, you know, the, the detailing isn't necessarily so bad. It's just a lot of contrast between the light and the dark areas. So I was thinking if I could just kind of either dye these or somehow like get that color a little bit more uniform, but still have a little bit of that character of the lightened areas in there, that would be perfect. So long story short, I'm gonna try the RIT color remover um, and see if that somehow kind of redistributes that indigo dye. Um, and I wonder if it's gonna take it darker or if it'll keep it that kind of light color. And maybe if I just do it for a little bit, it'll kind of redistribute the color, kind of reduce the contrast there. And then maybe I'll end up with the perfect pair of jeans. I don't know, it's worth a shot. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Oh gosh, there's a lot of spots. <laughs> Y'all, I keep getting cracked up every every step of the way on this because I keep effing this up. <laughs> anyway, it's a lot of uneven spots, but maybe it gives it some character. I don't know. All right, so here are the jeans. <laughs> it's hard to see in this mirror, but I mean, they're not the worst. They're not the worst, but it's definitely a very uneven color. And... Um, if we haven't learned by this point in the video that I'm a bit obsessive, I think I'm going to do another round of the RIT color remover, but in a pot on the stove and get the temp up really high to try to get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more even, um, color throughout. Cause I'm hoping, I don't even want, know what I'm hoping at this point, <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm going to try that. If that doesn't get them where I want them then maybe I'll just accept it or maybe I'll eventually just dye the jeans a different color. So I'm gonna go to the store now. So I took a little trip to Joanne to pick up some RIT color remover. And I also picked up some of this RIT whitewash because I thought maybe I could use it for something good to have. And then I also grabbed a little bit of black dye. I have some blue and I can mix the two and re-dye my pants if I want to. And then I took a look at their denim. I found some 12 ounce denim that I might use to make myself a new pair of jeans to replace the ones that I ruined. In one final attempt to save these jeans, I cooked them in a pot of water on the stove according to the RIT color remover package instructions. Rinsed them out. The color was still kind of a light blue, which I was happy about. And it did sort of redistribute the color a little bit, but it really didn't do much more than washing them in the washing machine with the RIT color remover did. The color was a little lighter. It was a little bit more dispersed, 
but it was still very, very uneven and still really far off from the effect that I wanted. And I noticed too that the dye had started to kind of collect in the seams around the pockets and around the edges. And so, um, yeah, it was just really, really not what I was looking for. So I decided to bleach the jeans white and I may dye them again at some point later down the road. But for now, they're just gonna be white jeans. I am a little bit disappointed that I turned a perfectly good pair of dark denim jeans into a pair of white jeans when I could have just made a pair of white jeans with white denim, but I have to stop obsessing over these pants, so they're gonna be white. In other news, I'm actually quite happy with how the other two pairs of jeans turned out um, now that they're dry. I think that these turned out pretty good as far as the um, fading goes, there's a couple of like uneven spots. I'm not super concerned about that. I think there was one on one side of the leg. Anyway, I'll probably skip the bleach detailing on these. I'm not gonna even go there, but I will do a little bit of sandpaper um, to kind of rough up some of these areas and maybe do a little bit on the thighs here to kind of add a little bit of fading there. I did wear these jeans a little bit, so they did already have a little bit of a wear pattern starting to form, even though the denim was so dark, I couldn't even tell. So when I bleached it, that wear pattern really started to kind of come through. So I just used the sandpaper all over the jeans to enhance the areas where there was already a little bit of distressing and to add a little bit of extra color change to the front of the thighs. In the past, when I've used this method, I've noticed that it doesn't always show up as much as I want when I first do it, but after a couple of wears and washes, those areas will sort of enhance a little bit more. this video I just want to share a few takeaways that I gathered from going through this whole experiment so first of all I do think that the q-tip detailing could work quite well and it worked really well on my samples actually and I was really happy with how that came out one of the biggest mistakes that I made was going back over some areas before I had let the first kind of round of q-tip detailing bleach to develop and things just got way too light so I think if I had been a little bit more patient and been a little bit more light-handed with that technique um, going through around leaving it alone, stepping away from the jeans, letting that develop a little bit, and then going back into the areas that I felt like needed a little bit more, I think it could have worked really well that way. Another technique that I thought was actually pretty effective and worked pretty well was the bleach spraying. I didn't talk as much about that because I ended up completely bleaching those pants white, but I do think that that bleach spray with that kind of misting spray bottle worked pretty well. It really did kind of have a nice gradient. I would definitely try that again. And, and on wet jeans, I think that would work really well. Now the white jeans have definitely lost some of their elasticity, I noticed, and they're not quite as soft as they were before. They're still pretty soft, but I don't know if you can tell in the final reveal shots, they just seem more wrinkly. They don't have as much stretch recovery and I'll still wear them. I actually already have worn them out in public and really they're very comfortable jeans, um, but that bleach did degrade some of that elasticity in the denim for sure. One really good thing about this entire project was that my entire apartment smelled really clean <laughs> for the few days that I was working on this and I cleaned my bathroom and my kitchen really well for filming, so that was a plus. Overall, I don't think that this project was a complete bust. I definitely will wear the white jeans. I think that they're still cute. Um, I may eventually dye them. Maybe that'll be another video, 
but it's not a total bust and, I, and they are still wearable. And the other pairs of jeans that I bleached, I'm actually really happy with how those turned out. I only showed my flares because the skinny jeans, I realized the reason I never wore them is because they are actually very tight and I made them probably five or 10 pounds ago. So I didn't even put those on. I wasn't even gonna show you those because they just, they're, they're tight and they're very low rise, which I don't even know why I made them so low rise, but that's why I have not worn those in forever. Ultimately, I think the best course of action <laughs> if you want to have distressed denim is to just wear the denim. You know, we sew our own clothing. We are invested in slow fashion. Maybe if you make a pair of jeans, you wear them like consistently for a month or two and don't wash them a lot and let some of that natural distressing happen. Then if you want to bleach them a little bit lighter, I think that you would probably get a pair of jeans that you're really quite pleased with. So that would be my recommendation is to just take it slower and actually wear the jeans and let them distress naturally. Okay, I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Maybe we can all learn some lessons from my mistakes. God, there's a gnat in here. Two. Oh, let's see. I was gonna say something else. Freak. There's something I was gonna say. Oh, no. Oh, I was gonna say.